Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. And today in this AZ104 exam preparation series, let's take some interesting questions. We will also take a new question format today. And yes, there is a free PDF file today with all the questions and the answers. So please watch video till the very end. Now let's jump in and prepare for AZ104. So let's open today's episode with a new kind of question drag and drop. So here it comes question number 76 part 11. The question says that you have downloaded an Azure resource manager or ARM template to deploy numerous virtual machines. Now the ARM template is based on the current virtual machine but must be adapted to reference an administrative password. Now you need to make sure that the password cannot be stored in plain text. You are preparing to create necessary components to achieve your goal. Which of the following should you create to achieve your goal? And please note that you have to drag the correct options from the list to the answer area. So these are the list or the options and you have to drag only the correct answers or the options to this answer area. So let's check out what are the options given. We have Azure Key Vault, Azure Storage Account and then we have Azure Active Directory, Identity Protections and then we have Azure Access Policy and lastly Azure Backup Policy. Now let's check out what are the correct options. So the first correct option is Azure Key Vault. So you must first create an Azure Key Vault. And once you have created your Azure Key Vault, the next step would be to create Azure Access Policy. And friends, we have taken so many questions on Azure Key Vault in the previous parts as well. So please do check them out. And also we will take more drag and drop kind of questions in the subsequent episodes. And now let's move on to the question number 77. The question says that your organization has deployed multiple Azure virtual machines configured to run as a web servers and Azure public load balancer named TD1. Now there is a requirement that TD1 must consistently route user requests to the same web server every time they access it. What should you configure? Your options are hash based, option B, session persistence, none. And then we have option C, session persistence, client IP and lastly health probe. And the correct answer is option C, session persistence, client IP. Now let's understand this question and the answer in little bit more detail. Here it comes, you can see this image. So first of all, my friends, we have public load balancer that can provide outbound connections for the virtual machines inside your virtual network. And these connections are accomplished by translating their private IP addresses to public IP addresses and public load balancers are used to load balance internet traffic to your virtual machines. And then we have session persistence, which is also known as session affinity or source IP affinity or client affinity. And this distribution mode uses two tuple, source IP and destination IP. And when my friends you're using session persistence, connection from the same client will go to the same backend instance within the same backend pool. And once again, I want to bring emphasize that session persistence has two mode of configuration. The first one is client IP with two tuple. And this type here specifies that the successive requests from the same client IP address will be handled by the same backend instance. This one specifies that the successive requests from the same client IP address and the protocol combination will be handled by the same backend instance. Now let's move on to the question number 78. This one says that you plan to create an Azure container instance named container one that will use a docker image name image one now you need to ensure that the container one has a persistent storage which as your resource should you deploy for the persistent storage and your options are option a and azure container registry option b and azure storage account and file share option c and azure storage account and blob container and option d and azure sql database and the correct answer is option b and azure storage account and file share and here it says a standard docker container volume is normally a directory stored on the docker host machine and this makes the container dependent on the files on the particular host and thus makes it hard to migrate and scale out easily. And that's why with the Azure file storage plugin, we can mount the Azure file storage shares as directories on your host file system and make it available to the containers, which can now all make use of the Docker volume created through the plugin. And you can also read that Azure file storage volume plugin is not limited to the ease of container migration. So that's how my friends Azure storage account along with file share provides a persistent storage for the containers. 
Now let's move on. Question number 79. And this one says that you have an app named App 1 that runs on two virtual machines named VM1 and VM2. Now you plan to implement an Azure availability set for App 1. The solution must ensure that the App 1 is available during planned maintenance of the hardware hosting VM1 and VM2. What should you include in your availability set? And your options are option A, one update domain, option B, two fault domains, option C, one fault domain, and lastly, two update domains. Now, let me first tell you the answer and then I will explain. So, the correct answer is option D, two update domains. Okay, so now let's understand why we have picked two update domains as the correct answer. So, in this question, the goal is to implement an Azure availability set for app one which will ensure that the application still remains available during the planned maintenance of the hardware hosting virtual machine 1 and virtual machine 2. So friends, listen to this very carefully. When you create an availability set, the hardware in a location is divided into multiple update domains and the fault domains. And just so you know, an update domain is a group of virtual machines and underlying physical hardware that can be rebooted at the same time. Now friends, virtual machines in the same fault domain share the common storage as well as the common power source and network switch. But during the scheduled maintenance, only one update domain is updated at any given point of time. And also update domain are not necessarily updated sequentially. So that's why we need two update domains. Now let's move on to the question number 80. The question says that you have an Azure subscription named subscription one. Now you have five TB of data that you need to transfer to subscription one. You plan to use Azure import export job. Now what can you use as the destination of the imported data? Your options are option A, Azure Cosmos DB database, option B, Azure blob storage, option C, Azure data lake store, and the option D, the Azure file sync storage sync service. And the correct answer for this question is option B, Azure blob storage. And you know what friends, there can be two correct options here. The first one as you see is Azure Blob Storage, but the other correct option can also be Azure File Storage. So in case in the real exam, you get the option Azure File Storage instead of Azure Blob Storage, then in that case, you have to pick File Storage. And I know that you're waiting for the free PDF file. Let's move ahead. So friends, to get the free PDF file for this episode, but before that, I have a humble request to make to please check out our member community. It's a wonderful community where you can get more learning materials, PDF files with all the questions and the answers and you can also directly connect with us. Okay, my friends, in order to get the free PDF file for this episode, you have to tell me the correct answers for the questions mentioned here. And please note three important points. You must be subscribed to the channel, which is absolutely free. And secondly, the free PDF file is only available for the first three days of this video launch. So that's why do spread the video so that others can also take the advantage of free PDF file. And finally, send your answers to our email ID connect us at the rate the techblackboard.com. And if you wish to read more and increase your knowledge, then please read our blog at the techblackboard.com slash blog. And please like the video, subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends. And that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.